So we're here this afternoon at the 2016 SHOT Show with a special guest who's come to visit us all the way from Australia, Jeff Warman, who's a member of the Victoria uh, Parliament, which is equivalent of a state senator in the United States. And Jeff, uh, recently, uh, part of the United States presidential campaign, one of the candidates, Hillary Clinton, has talked about how uh, we as Americans should look to Australia as the model for sensible uh, gun safety regulations and laws. And I was wondering, as an Australian and a uh, shooter and a gun owner, uh, what you think about that? Well, thanks. first of all, thanks for having me, Larry. Um, well, first of all, you can look to Australia for um, what I would call failed gun legislation. Uh, if we're modelled as what would be a success story, then um, then I, I, I'm really not sure what they mean by success. Back in 1996, we had our um, we had a massacre in Port Arthur, and as a result of that, they took away a vast amount of firearms from legitimate shooters, people that have never done a thing wrong in their life, as you have to have done or have to have been to have a shooter's license in Australia, and. Since then, there's been much crowing about the reduction in firearms deaths since 1996 and a reduction in crime, or gun crime specifically. And whilst that is technically right, if you look before 1996, the, the actual deaths was dropping anyway. Uh, statistically, the, the deviation after 1996 is so tiny, it, it matters not. And the other problem is, whilst they took a lot of firearms out of, um, let's call it circulation, um, the other types of homicides, such as uh, stabbing and blunt objects and so on went up to uh, to make up for the the reduction so it, it's really achieved absolutely nothing for a whole lot of money it was half a billion dollars um, to take all these to confiscate all these firearms from law-abiding people and really it's been half a million dollars just washed down the toilet so the difference between Australia and the United States is that we have a, a second amendment and so what would you say to Americans uh, um, about their Second Amendment rights and looking at your, your experience in Australia? Well, my advice would be to give nothing. Um, what the people that want your guns call sensible gun laws are not sensible gun laws. Sensible gun laws are ones that punish criminals. So by coming after the people that aren't the problem, all they're doing is demonstrating that it's not about um, public safety, it's about their ideology. You have the Second Amendment uh, as part of your uh, constitution, we don't. Um, I would suggest that you think about what that actually means and you know, there's, there's debate about exactly what it means, whether it's um, there's a militia involved, and, but I've also had people mention there's a, a, a comma after militia, meaning that it doesn't actually run in as a thought process. So really everyone that wants to own a firearm, whether it's for uh, self-defence, for sporting purposes or because they want to, really needs to think long and hard about what's coming up and actually get off their butt, register to vote and punish those that want to take your guns away from you for doing nothing wrong, punish them in the ballot box. Thanks very much. And so uh, we've heard also talk about uh, you know, Australia being the model that we should replicate here in the United States and that there wasn't confiscation of firearms, it was just a buyback and so uh, it gives a sense or the impression that you would have an option as a gun owner in Australia as to whether or not to uh, you know, receive the money in the buyback. Is, was that true or is that incorrect? Um, the only option you had was to hand in your guns or go to jail. Um, the, it, it is confiscation. I personally have been through three of them, one in 1989, one in 1996 and one in 2003. Uh, it's not pleasant, but as a law-abiding person, and that, and that is what they will get a lot of people on, as a law-abiding person, we will do what we're told and, and that's what they're banking on. Um, you really need to think long and hard of making sure you, that this country never lets it get to that point. Really, I cannot reiterate it often enough, vote is how to get rid of them. You know, your power is in the, uh, in the polling booth. Your Second Amendment won't help you if you can get someone that will change it. Well, we're lucky and the Supreme Court has decided that the Constitution, uh, the Second Amendment, provides an individual right and it's not a right of the government or a militia, that it's a right of the individual person to keep and bear arms for lawful purposes. So uh, we are very fortunate, but I do think that you're right, people in the United States uh, can't take it for granted and need to defend that right in the ballot box. We have a program here that uh, NSSF runs called Gun Vote, where we are encouraging 
um, law-abiding gun owners to get registered, to get educated about where the candidates that are running for office truly stand on firearms issues, on, on the Second Amendment, uh, and then to take that into consideration when they go into the ballot box and to gun vote. So uh, we appreciate your being here and taking the time to share your experiences in Australia, which are very unfortunate. Uh, and I hope that uh, Australians will uh, collectively come together and uh, force the issue through the democratic process and possibly establish a Second Amendment right uh, in Australia so that law-abiding citizens can defend themselves. Uh, well, one thing, Larry, hopefully you'll never need to get to the point of having a shooters and fishers party, but that's exactly how we are now. We've got to the point that both sides of our politics have uh, forced gun control measures on us that are, uh, are useless, demonstrably useless, and um, they have no data to back it up. So we've, we, being the shooters back in 1992, formed the Shooters and Fishers Party in a state called New South Wales. Anyway, fast forward to now, we have five people over the country, two in Victoria, one of them being myself, two in New South Wales, and one in WA. So it can be done, but uh, the prevention is better than cure. Um, I really do believe that America, or the gun owners of America, really can stop this now if they mobilize now. Tomorrow is too late. So let me just ask you a couple of questions. What's your impression? This is your first time to the SHOT Show? It is. And tell me what your impression is of the SHOT Show. Uh, it, it's massive, I've got to say. But it's exactly the same as home in the, in the context of everyone here, everyone I see around here, is a law-abiding person. This is, these are the... This is the gun lobby, every single person that's in here. It's not the manufacturers, it's the people that exercise their, in their rights in this country, but also their right in the ballot box. These are the people that the anti-gunners need to be afraid of. These are the people that can actually thwart them. Thanks very much for your time, Jeff. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the show. And everybody, just remember, come election day, gun vote.